Hey, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. I want to talk a little bit today about uh, why cops get shot and killed. I was going to make this some time ago, but uh, but it probably worked out better now. If you watched a couple of my videos ago on YouTube, you heard me talk about an officer that we had uh, killed here in Overland Park, got in a gunfight. And I'm going to use uh, a little bit of that situation as a, as a teaching tool. Um, and then talk about some other things that will apply to everybody else. Any law enforcement listening here, I hope that you really will listen. Um, and, and everybody else realize that these things can happen to you as well and will probably be more of a surprise to you than they would to be to law enforcement. Uh, you know, a lot of people would say, well, you ought to be out at a range making a video like this. Um, you know, I'd look more tactical and I'd, I'd look more cool, and super cool. And, um, but you know, the range is not where you learn not to get killed. It's not where you learn how to handle those situations on the street. It's, it's how you learn to take your weapon out of your holster and, uh, and put some shots in some paper targets. And uh, a lot of people go through that, and they think they're pretty good because they're, you know, shooting possibles all the time. I don't know if they still use that term or not. It's been a long time. When uh, when when I was in, if you shot the highest score, you just said you shot possible because you know that's you, you shot as, as high as you possibly could, so you shot a possible. Um, the situation that we had here in Overland Park. And, and the information that I had when, when I made that last video, as is often the case, well, as is always the case, uh, the first information is never the right information. You know, it takes a few days for the truth to bubble, bubble to the top and, and, uh, you know, witnesses be interviewed and, and, uh, radio traffic be, uh, reviewed and, and, uh, you know, finally, as you work through the evidence, you, you come to a, a a description, an understanding of the situation that was a lot different than, than the first one. And so now I have a little bit more information to talk about. Let's talk about this one first, and then I'll go into some others. Um, what, had, uh, what had happened was an officer, was an off-duty officer, was headed to work, saw a hit-and-run, a, a, a guy smash into another car and try to leave the scene. Uh, apparently the other car was disabled to the point that he wasn't able to get away. The officer confronted him, got out of his car, confronted him, called the police department to get a district car there. The suspect got out of his car. The officer told him to get back in his car. The suspect did not probably, you know, coming towards him, probably encroaching on him. Um, uh, and, uh, and from radio traffic, they, they know that, uh, uh the officer was was telling him get back in his car, and he wouldn't. Uh, before another district car could get there, the uh, they got into a scuffle, and probably what happened was the suspect charged him or or pulled his gun first. I'm sure, and uh, they went to the ground, and uh, the the suspect was able to get a shot through the officer's vest, and then another shot in an area, and I won't be specific here, but in an area that wasn't covered by the vest. Uh, the officer was able to pull his weapon and put five in the chest of the suspect and then get back on his phone and, uh, and tell them to upgrade the call that shots had been fired. And uh, they asked him, uh, are you okay? And he said he thought he was. He was checking, and that's the last that they heard from him. By the time a district car got there, the officer was unresponsive um, and then uh, later died at the hospital. What had happened here, and it's, and it's pretty obvious, and it's, it's what happens in so many of these situations where police are killed, was that the officer was surprised and he wasn't ready. And I can say that, you know, with certainty because of, of what happened along the way. It went to the ground. Nobody wants to go. You never want to go to the ground. 
If, if you're on the ground, you're, that, that's the next death to go into the grave. You know? And, and I, I tell a story about that in a, a video a long time ago about when young guys came to me and, and, uh, and wanted to, to, to learn ground fighting. And I'm not going to get into that here, but I, I, I tell you, you know, the ground is where you die. You want to stay off of the ground. And if you understand and if you're ready and if you see the, the situation developing, you're not going to go to the ground. Okay. What, whatever. If, if you have developed your capabilities, uh, you're going to be able to avoid that in a, in a police situation, unless you're swarmed by a crowd or something like that. But in a one to one situation, you're not going to the ground or if you do, you're crazy. Uh, and especially if, you know, once it looks like a, a firearm is involved. So that's what happened to this guy. He was surprised. I've watched a lot of, of, uh, videos of police shooting. And, uh, in just about every case, the officers were surprised. They were shocked. They weren't ready. They weren't ready because they were operating under the assumption that it wouldn't happen. And you might remember if you saw one of my long ago video, well, it was long ago, is it I, a year ago, maybe something like that, when I talked about the, 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 the nature of attacks and how they sudden happen suddenly, but not without warning. And I talked about the three enemies, confusion, fear, and the attacker, confusion being the first one, that when it happens, when violence occurs out of a, a, a usually nonviolent world, uh, one of the first things that sets in is confusion. Um, and then you work your way through that. And it takes you, you know, whether it takes you 10 seconds or one second, if, if you're in an attack situation, one second can mean the difference. And once you get through there, uh, you know, whether you go through fear or not depends on pretty much your experience. Uh, and, and then you have to deal with the, the attacker. But if you're already, if you're surprised and you're going through that confusion, you've given that attacker, you know, the, the odds. And, and now you're fighting out of a hole. And every one of these police shootings that I see, I see, you know, second by second by second by second warnings being given off by these suspects that they're going to come at them. And, and the officers don't see it because they are used to it not happening. Um, this doesn't happen a lot in the city, to be honest, because, you know, city cops are always on, on guard. They're always on the edge. They figured the whole world's out to kill them. And that's exactly, you know, the, the mindset that you need to have. Um, out in the suburbs and, and sometimes on the highways, uh, or, or in the counties, that's not the mindset. You know, they're used to dealing with people who don't necessarily want to kill them, right? They may not like being stopped by them, but they're not usually going to kill them. And the more often you stop a car and there's no danger, you know, there, uh, the more that becomes your normalcy. And that's the danger. Um, the, the training, and I've talked about this also, um, the, the amount of training that many of the, the police departments and sheriff's departments go through now is far less extensive than, than you might think. Um, they've gotten away from the, you know, uh, learning to fight and learning to shoot and getting street smart and such as that. And to be honest, they've pumped them full of diversity and, and, uh, and, uh, community policing and, and thing and being officer friendly and stuff like that. And so when these people get out there and, and they uh, run across a guy who, who wants to do them in, they're, they're simply not ready for it. You know, the funny, well, it's not funny, but the interesting thing about this was, you know, when you, when you think about a cop killer, you think about, you know, some, some gangbanger, some hardcore, right? Uh, this guy who killed this cop up here, you know what he was? He was a ballroom dance instructor. That's right. Now, he had some personal problems and he had some issues with police, but he was a ballroom dance instructor. Hardly fits the profile of a cop killer, right? Well, down in the city, you looked at everybody the same way. 
you looked at every situation as if everybody there wanted to kill you and would take a shot if you gave it to them, if you gave them the opportunity, you know. And you can't. You can't. When uh, So when I see these, these officers out here, and they're, for the most part, good folks, many of them are in the wrong job. They are. They have the personalities of. Uh, well, let me just say that they don't have a a combative or a a a street smart personality, and that's dangerous. And that's the the uh, the type of personality that most people have, and that's why most people when violence comes their way, don't do very well. And that's why if things go to pot, whether it's the things that happened in my books or just as this society continues to devolve a little bit in this uh, interesting situation we have here, that's why they do badly. If you're serious, about wanting to protect yourself. The first line is to assume that unless you know the person, and maybe sometimes even then, uh, assume that they're going to try to kill you if you give them the chance. And then let them prove you wrong. Okay? Don't go out there and with the idea of uh, that, that your badge and your gun and your position and the niceties of society are going to keep you safe. Because they don't keep society safe from, from people with ill intent. Why would they keep you safe? You're supposed to be smarter than that. So I forget if I said this at the beginning or not, but... Uh, the range is not where you learn to stay alive. The street is. Okay. The range is where you learn to pull your weapon from your holster and put a few shots in, in, the, in the paper target. Okay. And, uh, and this officer, he was a firearms instructor. And uh, he, he, he did well. He was able to pull his weapon and he put five in the guy's chest. And he killed the guy, but it didn't save him. So, you know, th this was just, uh, I just wanted this to be kind of a serious reminder. And if not a reminder, maybe a first lesson to many of you out there. Uh, this world is a dangerous place. Just because you don't see it every day doesn't mean it's not out there. And it's going to poke its head up at the time that you're not ready. If there are times that you're not ready, and that solution for that is that you're always ready. Always ready. Everywhere you go, unless it's in your house or in the station, there are people out there ready to kill you. And if you don't carry that around with you, if you don't carry that idea... Yeah, and you still you still need to be able to be nice to the folks that you deal with, but realize that anybody out there could make that move. Okay, and if you're not ready for it, um, it's going to end badly, and people that you love are going to suffer for it. So take those lessons to heart, because a second too late is too late. And it's a lot better to walk around life in bright orange ready to go red than it is in, you know, yellow, a happy life, and then get your butt handed to you at the wrong time. Okay. I'll leave it at that. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.